among there we go Susanna, thank you so much for doing this. We're thrilled that you could be with us. Your film is absolutely astonishing. I can't remember the last time I learned so much from a single viewing on a single topic. Oh, thank you. It's, it's quite a remarkable piece of work. I'm wondering what you learned while making it. Well, I kind of learned everything while making it. I mean, I learned a lot before, I, I, well, I learned, I learned the beginning of it, you know, when I went to get treatment for my daughter. So I, I learned a little bit then, but what motivated it was that once I knew what was happening to her and I started talking to people about it, I discovered that so many people I knew had migraine and didn't talk about it. I didn't know they had this, you know, condition. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized how closeted it was and how nobody was talking about it and how there was a need to talk about it. So then when I began, when I decided to do a film and I began talking to, you know, experts and doctors and, you know, all the people I did, I, you know, I learned more than I ever imagined I could have. I also, the biggest surprise, I guess, which is in the film was learning that I had had abdominal migraine once I discovered there was such a thing and putting those pieces together and going oh my god that happened to me mm -hmm. why do you think the stigma is so powerful why do you think it's been such a well-kept secret I think probably the biggest reason is because it's seen as a disease of women it is you know 75 percent of people who suffer from migraine are women um, I think because it, you can't see it, mm. it has a lot of the same associations as, you know, hysteria and um, the sort of, you know, melodrama that is attributed to women when they are not believed. Sort of like breast cancer was for so long, such a dirty secret. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to ask you some questions now that came from the audience the night that we showed the film. Great. Um, why don't doctors tell parents and patients straight away what migraine symptoms are? Believe it or not, I think a lot of doctors don't know what they are. That's still a big problem. You know, I think it's there's a there's a doctor in the film that says that he teaches one hour on headache in medical school. So unless you're going into the specialization of headache medicine, as a medical student, you're really not going to learn very much. Mm. Plus, there are a lot of symptoms that are still being discovered as being associated with migraine, you know, because it's a neurological disease. And I think it's been so hard to break out of this sort of paradigm of headache, mm -hmm. which is obviously only one part of it. If, mm -hmm. if, if it's them, you know, and there's some people who don't even have headaches from it. So it's a very steep learning curve for doctors. Wow. It's so amazing. Um, how did you choose your subjects? Well, I chose my main subject because she's my daughter, <laughs> Emma, who um, was, uh, who I had easy access to. You know, I was just, I thought, you know, we were sort of testing it out. Is this, can we make a film like this? Is this, what's this going to be like? She brought to my attention um, Joan Didion's essay in mm. bed. And that gave me the idea to try to contact Joan Didion and choose her. And she said yes, which was amazing. What made you shoot Joan Dinian so extremely close up? Well, her extreme close up was just reading the material. She was kind of in a normal frame for the mm -hmm. interview. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be in her experience. Mm -hmm. I just wanted nothing else to exist for the moment. But that, and she, her face is so expressive and and you can see her pain. She was actually having a migraine while she was doing it. Mm. Um, 
we that was actually in the film at one point yes it was is it in it still yeah, I can't you know you edit a film for so <laughs> many years yeah 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 no it's there what, let's you know what's yeah. not she says I'm having one now <laughs> right anyway she, it, she's just such a vivid sort of experience of what she's talking about mm -hmm. so how long did it take you I'm still reading these from the audience how long did it take you to make this film um I hate to say this, but from beginning to end, eight years. And that was because we had so much trouble raising money because nobody was interested in a film about migraine. I, I mean, the money. film, the film community didn't get migraine and the migraine community didn't get film. So it was like, where do you go? We, we got sort of our biggest kick at the beginning was a grant from the migraine research foundation we met you know we would go to conferences and we would meet all these people and we would talk about what we were doing and actually one of the doctors you know we got i can't remember where we got the first little bit of seed money from but we had a little bit of money that we started out with and we went to a conference and we met some doctors and then they you know they knew where the money was and who was in that world of funding for research and it was one of the doctors in the film who suggested the um head of the foundation and then we got to her and then there was another foundation i mean we got a lot from foundations and 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 actually also family foundations private you know mm. families who had children who <laughs> suffered from it and recognized the incredible value of film in yeah. order to, you know, some people think, well, if it's not medical treatment, then what good is it? But, you know, particularly mothers, there was, you know, there was one couple where the father was like, why, what, well, how's a movie going to help my daughter? And mm -hmm. the mother's feeling was it's going to help her not feel so alone and, mm -hmm. and isolated and devastated. And it's going to help, uh, it's going to get attention to the subject. Another audience question, how did you cast your film with such a great geographical variety? Uh, that was very deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of back to how did you pick who you were casting? Yeah. Um, we, uh, I mean, you know, actually the geographical variety wasn't as deliberate as the gender, race, age, spectrum right that was very deliberate mm -hmm. we were i mean a couple of our subjects were in the south a couple were in the northeast I'm trying to even remember where we went you know we had doctors you know we have a doctor from ucla we have to you know we do yeah. the doctors were from wherever the great doc headache doctors are the great neurologists who would convene at whatever conferences and then we just you know go wherever they were and why is there such a paucity of funding for migraine research when over a billion people suffer from this disease? One, it's invisible. Uh -huh. Two, it's women, primarily. Uh, three, the, the, I think the term headache is really do, does a disservice. The association with headache does a disservice yeah. to the to the disease because it's so much more and it's and it and 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 it is not in it, except in instances which do exist of suicide it's not life threatening i mean there have been you know people who have killed themselves because yeah. of chronic migraine i mean that they they just can't live their lives but that's you know that's rare and so it's not considered life threatening yeah. So how can the migraine myth be broken so people can realize the condition is so much more than having a bad headache? By watching this film, by, yeah. I mean, you know, people, people have to wanna know or have to be exposed to it without knowing that's what's gonna happen. You know, people, sometimes people like get dragged to this film and then they go, oh my God, I had no idea. And it was so fascinating and it was so great to watch. and. Mm -hmm. um and you know it's really hard to break the stigma and to break through and get the information out and so you know we're 
we're placing this in medical schools. We have a grant um, to right. place it in medical schools right. all over the country, yeah. which we're working on now. So at least there will be access to it. And we're, you know, trying to distribute it as well as we yeah. can, but you know, you get the word So out. when you discovered that you had suffered as a child from abdominal migraines, mm -hmm. how did that affect you in terms of your thinking about your daughter and how does a person cope with abdominal migraines today? It didn't really change anything in my thinking about my daughter. I mean, I had been so consumed by what was going on with her for so long. It was just sort of another interesting piece. It made me feel a bit of, of a kinship, maybe. Yeah, a connection. Her. Yeah, yeah. Even though mine were very different from hers. Is it genetic? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it is hereditary. Migraine is her hereditary. And, and, I, I, and I think in the film, I, I say that I, I was asked by the neurologist, you know, who in your family has it for that reason. Right. And at the time I said no one, because I didn't, I didn't know yet about abdominal migraine. And I didn't realize that I, that, you know, it was me <laughs> that I had, you know, brought the genetic line to did Emma. your parents, did either of your parents suffer from any form of this? No. Not, not that we know of. Okay. No. So no other family member. Mm, I mean, probably, but not that I know of. And, you know, then there's the line, Emma's line that she couldn't, that her doctor couldn't ask people, does your mother have migraines? She has to say, did your mother go into a dark room and close the door? Right. You know, right. because right. people don't talk about it. So I don't know who's, I mean, sure. I'm sure right. plenty of people in my family and maybe even in Emma's father's family. Yeah. Have it, but right. how would we know? Right. So Emma's a social worker now. Yeah. How did her illness lead her there or did it? It did actually. And she said this on camera and we just couldn't fit it in the film. It made her want to help people who were suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. So it in fact, it inspired her so that she could be a, a, an example in a way to others. Yeah, it inspired her to help people who couldn't ne necessarily understand their own suffering or express it and help mm -hmm. them do that. That's amazing. Yeah. When you say in the very beginning of the film, this was one of my favorite parts, you say, um, I had to make this film. That's a really extraordinary thing because a lot of people wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. They know that their child is suffering from an illness, but they don't necessarily have the motivation or really the drive to turn it into something right. like a film or a book. So yeah. what propelled you? Well, I mean, I am a filmmaker, so I am someone who, when I see a subject that I feel needs to be explored, yeah. And, and is interesting to explore and that I have something to say about it, then that sets me off. Mm -hmm. It's not like I wanted to do it. No. This happens to me a lot in documentaries is it come, like a subject comes to me and it's like, oh my God, this has to be a film. Right. I understand that completely. Yeah. So knowing all that you know now, how would you advise a parent, any person really, who is suffering from migraines or who has somebody that they love who's suffering from migraines? Well, what would I say to them? Or would, how would I advise them? Yeah. Get to a headache specialist, get to a neurologist who is actually a headache specialist. I mean, there are some extraordinary doctors who aren't special headache specialists who are able to treat this. But I think if people are really suffering and not finding relief through normal medical channels, mm -hmm. they need to see headache. A headache specialist. So tell us about uh, the difference between a headache specialist and a migraine specialist. Who should go? Oh, they're the, they're the same. Migraine and headache specialist. Okay, so what's so the difference? Between a regular neuro Well, neurology has many different areas and headache right. is one area of neurology. Headache okay. and migraine is one area of neurology. But I, I have a, a, a really interesting story, which is that we had, I mean, one of the great things about this film is how many people come up to us afterwards. By us, I mean my my partner, my producer, Jack Yokes, and me. Yeah. Um, uh, 
you know, people come up to us and say, I had no idea, or I, or, I mean, we've had people who suffer from migraine, you know, hug us weeping. My, you know, my, my husband finally understands what I'm going through. I don't feel so alone. I, I had a guy say, oh my God, my wife dragged me here. And now for the first time in my life, I understand what my daughter's going through. Yeah. But we had a headache specialist, a doctor, a neurologist, headache specialist who came up to us after a screening. And she said, I'm a headache specialist. I don't suffer from migraine myself. This is the first time in my life, I have really understood what my patients are going through. Wow. <laughs> well, that's, that's everything. I mean, how, how amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah. It was so, not fantastic. Our, so not only are you able to allow the audience to empathize who may have migraines or know someone who has a migraine condition, you also gave a doctor the gift the first time to really understand what it's like to wear those shoes yeah i mean most honestly most doctors who go into headache medicine actually do suffer from migraine really sort of drive leads them there but some don't and so you know it's something that's that's you know really hard to understand unless you put your mind to it how is emma doing now with her migraines she's doing great She's doing great. She's really managed. She's one of the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's had a few flare ups, but she basically, um, well, she, well, it's actually really interesting. They, the, uh, they kind of um, transformed as they do, they change over time or, or they can change over time. They can get worse, they can get better. They can turn into sort of something else. And when she stopped getting headaches and aura, um, she started, she got IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, yeah. which is yeah. a very, it, it's, it's, it's not an adequate name for what it is. It's not ir an irritation. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an agony. Serious. Yeah, no, it's, I know. It, um, and uh, so Bob Shapiro, who's the doctor in the film in Vermont, who mm -hmm. does the um, gut brain connection research. Yes. Yeah. He said, you know, his feeling is this is her, the current manifestation of her migraine. So she was, she had that for several years and her diet was really, really restricted. It right. Was and she got really, very, very thin. Oh, it was, it's really hard. To, no, that on the camera, she was thin because of the drug that is oh, yeah, not named, but right, is, right, right, I right. can say now is Topamax, which yeah. makes them thin and stupid. Right. But then, you know, she got off of that and she got, you know, her, so this didn't change her weight, but it was just a really a pain to, I mean, it was like impossible to cook for her or go out to mm -hmm. dinner. And, I mean, she wasn't living with me anymore, but she, you know, she had a very restrictive diet and she hated it too. She finally did a self hypnosis course mm. and she actually cured knock on wood, the IBS. Wow. With self-hypnosis. And amazing. she's not like a woo-woo person. It's, it, <laughs> but it was like, there's something called gut directed self-hypnotherapy. She was desperate. She would have tried anything. That's fascinating. Yeah. And just further affirms the gut mind connection. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Tell me about the epilogue and how uh, that came to be. What's the epilogue? I can't remember. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a few years, a couple of years. The, her, of Emma. Of yeah. How that came to, oh, okay. So, you know, we did the film, we started the film. She was the first interview we did and right. it was like really good. So we kept it in the film. <laughs> then um, then uh, uh, the other thing that's interesting about the filmmaking process is that for years, I was not a part of the film. I was not, and when I did the interview with her, I said, just don't talk to me like I'm your mother. Talk to me like I'm, you know, just a film interviewer. So I kept, I kept struggling to find the narrative arc of the film. And at one point I realized that I had to be in it. And I had to admit that I was Emma's mother and I had to bring the personal thread in. 
I didn't want to film myself. I didn't want to be on camera. That's when we thought of the animation to wow. make the that to make that Emma's and my story, the spine of it, and to do it through to make me an animated character and to do our story through animation. So that gave shape to the film. That was kind of the solution to the film. That was the arc. Mm -hmm. So then we got through that and it was like, okay, here's Emma, you know, eight years later. Right. Let's revisit this. Now this is the this is the, you know, the final step of the arc mm -hmm. and I had access to her <laughs> so we did and she actually said some really interesting things in mm -hmm. um in the final interview some of which I was able to use just the audio but I couldn't I didn't want to bring the picture in until the very end you, I didn't want you to see Emma now until right we got to the very end right and yeah. Go ahead. I just I just have one more interesting filmmaking point is when I put myself in it. Um, she had already we already had it had structured it around her starting the story of being in Paris and having her boyfriend come and having her migraines start again. What I realized the way in mm -hmm. to bring me into the story was a line that I that was true but that I wrote and had her record, which is, that's when I called you. Right. And told you I had to come home. So it went from this objective story to subjective and it was directed at me. And then I was in Got the it. film and it didn't happen that way. She did call me and tell me she had to come home, but yeah. she had, I, I got her to say that line. That's great. So what are you working on now? Um, I'm working on a couple of things that I, I'm a little reluctant to talk about. One is a documentary, a short documentary. Um, that's a very kind of, it's like a little memoir piece of this woman who something happened to that I, I'm not, I can't, I'm not really ready to talk about, but it's this story. It's, it's, it's learning something kind of awful, some, learning something about her father after he died and reckoning oh. with that, that she wished hadn't been true and not, and how do you reckon with that after the person's gone? Right. Um, and then I actually am working on the other th main thing is a TV series, a, you know, a fictional TV series comedy. Great. And um, that is in kind of in, I mean, I, I don't know if it will, how far it will go, but it's very well positioned right now to possibly, you know, move okay. forward. Right. Yeah. But it's a, it's a really, it's kind of my, it's, it's my great relief from these dark and painful documentaries is to write comedy, which I do. Great. Yeah. Comic relief. Yep. <laughs> so is there anything else that you want us to know about migraines or being the parent of somebody who has this condition or a loved one or a friend or anything. I mean, I would say that we did, when the film came out, we did a lot of interviews. We did an interview in um, Marie Claire magazine, I think was where Emma said, somebody asked her that, what's the one person you would say? It was the opposite. What would you say to people, to the fam family and friends of people with migraine? And she said, believe them. Mm. That was her answer. Believe them. God. And so I would say, believe them. I would say, um, you know, to people who, who might be watching this and not have gotten this, not have been at the screening or not have gotten this information to go to our website, which is out of my head film.com. And aside from being able to rent and buy the film there and share it with friends and, you know, tell people, um, there's also a list of resources of, you know, headache and migraine resources and organizations to, you know, help people. So the, the website is actually more than just like a commercial site. It's full of information. Excellent. Okay, Susanna, thank you so much for this. We really thank you. It. Okay. This is great. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.